Hey, what's going on everyone? How are you guys doing today? Welcome back to the Nesting 2 video, and today we're going to be talking about fusion rifles. How to use them in the Crucible, and how to get better with them. Fusion rifles have to be my favorite type of special weapons in the game, that is very satisfying to use, and they can also be very effective. So today I want to share with you guys a couple tips on fusion rifles, so hopefully you will give them a try, and hopefully we can get some more members to join our brave cause of spreading the love of the fusion rifle. So without further ado, let's actually get started. Okay, so the very first thing is going to be actually choosing the fusion rifle that you're going to be using. And I'm just going to be honest with you guys. Well, there's a couple of good fusion rifles like the main ingredient and the wizard rebuke. Nothing is really as effective as Erentil. Erentil just has crazy consistency when it comes to getting one shots, which is the thing that you're looking for the most when it comes to fusion rifles. So while other ones are good, you should definitely go for a good Erentil. A good Aaron Till is what's really going to show you what the fusion rifles can actually do in this game and it's just the best. So you should just try to get a good Aaron Till from the gunsmith. And that's pretty much the only place that you can get it, use the gunsmith. You're going to have to turn in some weapon materials and basically you spray to RNGs that you actually get a good roll on the Aaron Till. You can also use poor year one Aaron Till from the collections which that one actually does pretty good. It's basically the roll that I use for two whole seasons. And I can tell you that it's a really good roll, it has also a lot of consistency, and you can still one shot people at your some outrageous range. So the year 1 Erentil is definitely a good option if you can't really get a good random roll Erentil. Okay, so now let's actually talk about the perks that you should be looking for on your Erentil. First off, for the sight, you want to look for a sight that has some good range and also has some good zoom magnification. There's a couple of them that can roll on the Erentil. You can get the Signal MS5. The Impulse MS3, the Transmission MS7, the Flash HS5, and the Torch HS3. All of those would actually be some pretty good options, but your best bet is probably going to be the Signal MS5 or the Flash HS5. For me, these two are used the best. They give you both of the things that you're looking for, some range and some good zoom. So now for the Magazine perk, you're either looking for some Projection Fuse, which is going to increase the range, or for some Liquid Coils which is going to increase your damage, but it's going to make you charge time on the fusion rifle a little bit slower. And I'm personally more a fan of liquid coils. I think that the extra damage can really make a difference, especially if you're going up against someone that's a little bit farther away. I think that the extra points of damage that you get from liquid coils can make more of a difference than the actual range you get from projection fuse. But regardless, I actually think that these two perks are pretty good, even though I actually prefer liquid coils. Now for your trade perks, you mostly want to look for some under pressure, tap the trigger, high impact reserves, or rangefinder. Under pressure is really gonna allow you to hit those use longer fusion rifle shots thanks to the extra stability and accuracy. And since most of the time you're not really gonna have a lot of ammo with your fusion rifle, you should always have this perk active and you should always be taking advantage of it. With tap the trigger, it's kind of a similar case. It also guarantees you so much stability and accuracy. Use that with this one. It doesn't really matter if you have a lot of ammo or not, you're always going to be taking advantage of that stability and accuracy every time you fire the fusion rifle, just because of the way that tap the trigger works on them. So tap the trigger is definitely a perk that you should be looking for, it's really going to help you. So because of that, tap the trigger is actually one of my favorite ones up there with under pressure. If you can actually get under pressure and tap the trigger together on the same row, you're just going to be having your super stability and accuracy and you're going to be sniping people at you some ridiculous, and I really truly mean ridiculous range. All the good perks are like high impact reserves, which actually perks up really nicely, also with under pressure. Since if you have the both of those perks together, you get the increased accuracy and stability, as well as the increased damage, meaning that when you are low on your magazine, you are super deadly. So sometimes high impact reserves can really come in handy, Especially if you didn't get something like liquid coils. If you didn't get something like liquid coils, high impact reserves is something that you should definitely be looking for. And lastly, the final perk that we're going to recommend for this is going to be Rangefinder. Which also is going to increase your range when you're aiming down sight and increases your magnification. So yeah, more range and more zoom magnification which is going to help you hit people from a little bit farther away. And it's also going to allow your weapon to have a bit more aim assist because of the extra zoom. So these are the perks that you're looking for, you want to get the ultimate Erentil that can just one-shot people from really far away. 
on this perks that we just talked about that can be good on any fusion rifle so even if you're not going for the roll on the air until these are also good perks to use have on any fusion rifle doesn't really matter which one okay so now let's actually move on to actually playing with the fusion rifle and the very first thing they want to talk about and the most important thing you want to keep in mind when playing with fusion rifles is your minimap knowing your surroundings and looking at your minimap is useful with all the weapons but it's just super important with fusion rifles for you to actually have success with them. Knowing where the enemies are and where they're coming from means that you can charge your fusion rifle. So when they peek around the corner, you can use fire immediately and you don't really have to put yourself in too much danger. If you're not looking at your minimap, people may actually be able to sneak up on you. And since you have to charge your fusion rifle, you may not actually be able to stop them. So you always want to be looking at the minimap, seeing where those red dots are popping up and always start pre-charging when you see somebody is going to come around the corner. Pre-charging when someone's around the corner is basically just a must with any fusion rifle. It's something that you kind of have to get used to. And this only comes from actually playing with the fusion rifle and just trying it out. Knowing the limits on the fusion rifle, how much you push the charge before you actually fire the weapon. And so you don't accidentally fire it just into a wall or something. Just with some ammo. But with the pre-charging, that's all I could tell you. Just play a lot with the weapon and you're gonna get comfortable with it the more you use it. Especially if you, you stick to like a certain charge rate. If you go with a liquid coil seven till or maybe with a normal air until, they're gonna be a little bit different because of the charge time. So whatever fusion you choose, just practice pre-charging. Charge it up to almost where you're gonna shoot and then stop. Then do it again, then stop. Since that's basically what you do the majority of the time when using the fusion rifle. You're just charging the thing almost when it's ready, but then you don't see anybody, or you still don't have a view of the enemy, so then you stop, and then you do it again, just to make sure that it's ready for when the enemy actually does come out of cover, you can just peek and fire immediately without exposing yourself too much, and just getting some easy kills. So looking at your minimap and pre-charging pretty much go hand in hand, even when I do well with fusion rifles. So if you see somebody in the minimap, you start charging your weapon, if you think that they're gonna you know, look at you and try to shoot you. Make sure that you always have a charge so when they do try to actually kill you, or maybe they get brave and start rushing with a shotgun, you can just blow them away with a fusion rifle. Okay, so next up we're gonna be talking about fusion rifle shot placement. Unlike other weapons, pretty much any other weapon actually in the game, you don't wanna go for headshots with the fusion rifles since they don't really have any headshot multipliers. No matter where the fusion rifle hits, it's gonna do the same damage if you hit them in the body or you hit them in the head, doesn't really matter where you hit them. So because of this, you have to aim your shot with the fusion rifle a little bit differently to get the most out of it. Where you usually want to aim with a fusion rifle is that you want to aim around the stomach area. The stomach or the chest area is where you really want to aim with the fusion rifle. You aim at this part because it's the easiest to hit. And you also aim here because once you fire the weapon and the recoil kicks in, it's gonna kick your weapon up, meaning that your burst is not gonna all hit in that spot. It's actually gonna hit right above it as well. So if you aim down here, that means that with the top of the burst, it's still gonna hit the majority on the body. And the more bolts you hit, the higher the chance that you're gonna get a one-shot kill. Which is what we wanna maximize the most. We just wanna get as many one-shot kills as possible. So remember to aim for the lower stomach, so when the fusion rifle kicks, it's just gonna kick up around the chest area, and you're still gonna hit all your bolts. You're not really gonna miss anything. And doing this is what's really gonna help you get those crazy one-shot kills that you guys see me sometimes hitting on stream. Every time that happens, everyone's always like, oh no, how is the air until hitting from so far away? And that's because of this. Depending on how far away the enemy is, the lower you wanna aim your weapon. So when the Riku kicks up, you will still hit most of the body. So if they're really far away, you really want to aim for more of the upper legs. So the recoil kicks up and you end up hitting like the chest and the stomach and all that. And so you don't miss a lot of it. Because if you aim for just the chest and they're kind of far away, a lot of the bolts are going to miss just because of the recoil and them being farther away. So that's basically a rule that you want to remember when going for long range shots with the fusion rifle. The farther away that they are, the more severe the recoil is going to be on the weapon. So the lower on the body you want to aim on the enemies. If you do that, you're gonna see that you're gonna start to hit a lot more long range air until shots, or actually any fusion rifle shots for that matter. 
And there is an exception to this rule that you don't really have to aim as lower if you're on PC. Since there's the lower weapon recoil when you're using mouse and keyboard on PC, you don't really have to aim your fusion rifles that low. You can use pretty much aim for the stomach area and the bolts will still be pretty tight together. You don't really have to compensate for the recoil as much as we do on console. Okay, so this entire video we're basically just been talking about maximizing our one shot potential, the best perks to maximize the one shots, uh, where to aim on the body to maximize the one shots, but what happens when you actually do fire at somebody and they use survive? Maybe with a sliver of health or maybe with half health. Maybe you use getting a little too ambitious with the air until. Well, you always need to have a backup plan when you're using a fusion rifle. Every time you're using a fusion rifle and you're firing at an enemy, you gotta be ready for that shot to actually not kill them. And well, most of the time you'll probably kill them. You gotta be ready for those times that you don't kill them and they have a sliver of health. And there's basically two different things that you can do. The first one's pull out your primary and just finish them off with that. And this one's pretty simple. Use fire and as soon as their burst happens in the fusion rifle, you just immediately switch to your primary and be ready to finish off an enemy in case the burst to the fusion rifle doesn't actually kill them. This one just takes a little bit of practice. Every time you fire your fusion rifle, you just be ready to switch to your primary in case the enemy doesn't die. And the second option for when your first shot doesn't kill the enemy is used to go back into cover, recharge again, and go for a follow-up shot. If you're out in the open, you should definitely not do this one, because most of the time, if the enemy is good, they'll probably kill you before you get the second shot off. But if you do have some cover, you can just pretty much go back into cover, pre-charge again, peek again, and then you'll probably finish off the enemy. It sounds like a kind of lengthy process, but all this happens in probably like less than a second. So a lot of times the enemy doesn't really have any time to run away. So these are the two things that you want to do, just so you're always ready in case your fusion rifle doesn't actually one-shot somebody. Although, if you are doing the things correctly, most of your shots in the fusion rifle should be one-shots if you're staying within your range. If you're not just going for just some amazing fusion rifle snipes, most of them will probably be one-shots just because the consistency of the air and tail is just so good. But anyways guys, with that we're going to end today's video. That pretty much covers the basics of using a fusion rifle. If you guys would like to hear me talk uh, a little bit more about something specific that has to do with fusion rifles or maybe with something used in the Crucible in general, just leave it down in the comments below and I'll definitely make a video on it. Anyways, thank you all for watching today's video. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed it. Leave a like if you did, dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel in case you guys haven't already. Remember to leave a comment in the comments below, helps the video out and more people will find this video if you do. Anyways, thank you all for watching and see you guys next time. Take care everyone, have a good day.